minutes after five, we are reconvening uh, the select board meeting, which started started at uh, at Dolan Road. We have with us the select board. We have Shane. We have Victor. We have uh, Dorinda, and we have Paul Seminera. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Our um, town. I'm sorry. Our town clerk. And of select board. Town, of course, the town clerk. And select board assistant. So um, the report from the four o'clock uh, inspection at Dolan Road was that Gary Lamel and Phyllis Tillingast um, came. Uh, the select board was there with the exception of Liz Sharp and Shane was there. And basically the concern of both Gary and Phyllis was only that the part we were throwing up was above the two driveways at the bottom. They were both concerned about that large culvert and I explained to them that that section of the road would still be a class four road and therefore the town would be responsible for that culvert and they seemed fine with that. I invited them to participate in the Zoom, but they had other things in mind. So that's basically the report. Everybody was everybody was pretty happy and understanding. I mean, the question, the only question that came up, which was from Phyllis, was so if the reason that road is going is getting thrown up is that it is would be majorly expensive to maintain that as a class four road. Don't we have other roads in town that are now class four who are in similar shape? And she referred to Baldock Road and I said, probably we do. And she said, do you think that will get downgraded to a trail? And I said, it possibly could happen, but it isn't happening right now. So I think that, is there anything I missed, Steve? I think that's pretty much what the- No, that was it. Hey, uh, Peter. Yes. Yeah, uh, I it might help if what you would just to put a quick description of what you guys saw. For example, what you said, you know, when you case signed into the meeting, like the condition of that. So the, so the road is in substantially the same condition that it's been in for a long time, which it is a fairly deep gully, at least three feet deep, Steve, right? Wouldn't you say? That, that's correct. It's about three feet, probably deeper than what it was originally when people were using the road. Right, and there's a stream that runs right down at it into a culvert under the driveway down at the, down at the bottom. And it is definitely impassable. I mean, I, I, you could probably ride a, ride a mountain bike down there if you were very brave when it was dry, but uh, I believe you told me, Liz, that you walked down there. When you have your bicycle. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can bike down it. It's not pleasant. <laughs> you have to have a mountain bike. Yeah. And I can bike up it, and it's really hard, and I have to get off. But my husband can bike all the way up it. But it's like a trail. You saw it. It's like a mountain. It's yeah. like a. Yeah. It's, it's been so worn out. I don't even think you could fit a piece of equipment in there. No. Well, that's we actually we actually discussed that also. If, you know. <laughs> If the idea was to run the grader down there to try and improve it, how would you ever do it? We'd probably leave the grader in there. I don't know. It's I very do know narrow, the trees, the trees hanging over it. It is yeah. it's truly a trail at this point, not a road. Yeah. yeah. The trees that are in the right of way are quite tall and grown in. And there was one that was on the ground that was had fallen over, which made the road go to, to pass it. You'd have to go, well, you'd have to go around it. It was in the road way. So Sarah, do you want to read that letter from Forest Parks just so it's in the record? Yeah. Read it. Um, dear board members, oh. and this letter is dated October 25th from Rebecca Washburn, who is the Director of Lands Administration and Recreation. Sarah, can I just stop you for a minute? I yeah. don't think you re started the recording. Oh, shoot. I always have that problem. 
No, 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 no. Recording in progress. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oof, let's You're not going to make us start over, are you? No. You've got. I've got it in the minutes. And yeah. I mean, if this. Work is here. Work is here. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Work is okay. here. Thank yeah. God. Okay. Okay. October 25th, 2021 is the date of the letter. This is a letter from Rebecca Washburn, Director of Lands Administration Recreation. Uh, who I had to notify that about this uh, downgrading potentially of the of the class four road, which you must do whenever you downgrade a class four road to or any road into a trail. Um, dear board members, on September 27th, 2021, the Department of Forest Parks and Recreation received the petition to reclassify portions of Dolan Road in the town of Middlesex, Vermont. Per 19 VSA section 775, Municipalities must notify the Commissioner of Forest Parks and Recreation when a petition to discontinue a highway is filed. It is the policy of Forest Parks and Recreation to encourage municipalities to keep highways as public rights of way for emergency, recreational, forestry, agricultural, and other purposes. These roads provide numerous benefits, including access to year-round and part-time residents and camps, access to agricultural fields, forests, and sugaring operations access to state-owned parcels for recreational opportunities for hunting and fishing, forest man management, and other forest products. Recreational access for activities like hiking, mountain biking, cross-country skiing, horseback riding, and ATV and four-wheel use. FPR's lands administration staff and district staff in our Barry office have reviewed the petition and offer no comments concerning the proposed reclassification. FPR staff will not be participating in the public hearing and site visit occurring on November 2nd, 2021. We respectfully ask that this letter be recorded as part of the official proceedings on this matter. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Nice letter. Um, so at this point in time, we take no action. This is just a step in the process and remind us what the next step is. Um, the next step is that we have to draft uh, a resolution that you guys sign that will run past our town attorney that you guys will sign saying that you are going to downgrade this road into uh, uh, like a legal trail and you'll vote on that resolution and that will be your vote uh, to whether or not to pass that and if you pass that resolution then I think there's a whole process of notification and potential appeal period, and then it's recorded into our land records and that's it. Yeah, okay. So there's nothing for us to do now. The only other thing that I think would be a really good idea is I believe it was Phyllis mentioned that the, uh, the GPSs send the UPS trucks to that road. No. So probably it would be a good idea I would think it would be a good idea for us to put a sign at both ends that said this this is a trail and not suitable for whatever. Well, for the, for the, I mean, I remember the, when we were having that problem on Bulldog Road, we had tractor trailers, not Bulldog Road, uh, McCullough Road. We had tractor trailers trying to go through McCullough Road when it hadn't even been plowed. So anyway. It would be really good during this public hearing process to just have Shane state just with a couple of sentences how this process started and why the town is seeking to uh, downgrade this particular road or why he wants this particular road downgraded, which will, you know, talking about whatever fines or penalties for not maintaining it to class four standard, Shane, if you could do that, we could get that in to the public hearing portion and then it's all nicely together. All right. <laughs> That is a connected segment. And ah. connected segments are part of the Lake Champlain Basin, the whole water runoff. Um, that road has to be upgraded to state standards as part of a connected segment. To upgrade that road is going to cost an astronomical amount of money. It'd be easier to downgrade. There's no houses or anything on it. It's only used as a trail. So downgrade to a trail and we don't have to upgrade it. It will no longer be a connected segment. Ah, if you don't upgrade, and that's all the, is that's the municipal, that's the wastewater. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's all part of that. Okay. How long was the length that's of that the road? The, that's what started the discussion. And, and guess, guess what, by the way, I would say Bulldog Road is a connected segment also. 
So yeah, we'll have to look into that too because that not as in bad. I mean, I made it through there with a pickup. There's a couple holes. Um, it definitely needs some material if you're going to upgrade it and need some brush trimming, but that's nowhere near as bad as Dolan. Right. Shane, what was the uh, length of that road, the, the trail portion? 850. 832 feet. 832? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Anything else on Dolan Road? Was there any, um, so I know they, they, uh, Phyllis had mentioned the culvert. Is there any concerns about Oh, um, so what, what ha what's happened over the years is that it used to be drivable when I first lived here and now it's like a trail because of the water runoff, um, that's made it, you know, sort of look like a mountain trail and gets deeper and deeper. Like are, are there, cons if, if it's a trail, there's still an opportunity for us to do any kind of mitigation if we needed to, is that or not? Like if we chose to, because it somehow affected. I, I believe the way it works is, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Steve or Shane, uh, we can voluntarily do maintenance work on trails, whether it's removing fallen trees or, you know, whatever the, whatever the issue is, but it's not, it's not mandated. So I'm just no. picturing there could be some possibility of wash because of the way that there there's there's no real like um, direction that the water goes it just kind of goes down that it could damage the place that isn't a class for you know that that's a regular road that's a part well, of the town or whatever. the way it, the way it goes is and we looked at that is the water runs down runs down the bad part that's going to be a trail. And then it goes into a culvert, which goes under, not the Tillinghast driveway, but the, the house on the other side. Mm -hmm. So, but that culvert is there. I don't know if it's their driveway culvert or the town culvert, to tell you the truth. It's, it goes under their driveway, but anyway. Okay. So that water is diverted. So I don't think it would come down and, I mean, could the culvert get plugged up? Could water come down there? Sure, it could. And then we have to do a little repair on that class four section. Okay. But it isn't there another culvert down there now, right now? Is there another culvert a little farther down between that and the the road? Okay. Well, then it goes. Then I believe it goes down into the ditch, yeah. which is on the side of Bulldog Road, and there's a culvert that goes under. The class four portion, which is a which is a good size culvert because it carries all the water that comes down Tangletown and a okay. good share of the water. I suspect it comes down the hill from yep. Baldock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anything else on uh, anything else on Dolan? Then, with time to spare, we are moving on to our budget workshop. The Highway Department presents the budget. Wait, we don't have to vote on anything? Whoop. Oh. Hey, Peter. We don't have to vote? No. Why? Because oh. we have to gather up. No, we have to, We have to. Uh, as, as Sarah just outlined, she creates a resolution, then we vote on the resolution. Okay, okay, sorry. I, I <laughs> so that's the process. We don't vote now. Okay. Sarah, do you have something? Yeah. Well, since it's, it's a little early, it's 518. I wonder if maybe we could uh, address the other business stuff. To, so give the budget committee a, a chance to show. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, that's a good idea. So let's go down to uh, approval of the minutes of October 19th, 2021. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Steve, is there a second? Bill. Mary. Bill or Mary. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor of approving the minutes of the October 19th, 2021 select board meeting, please say aye. Or raise your aye. hand. Aye. Any opposed? Um, this is a typo. I'm sorry. It meant, it, I meant to have 26, not 16. 
October 26th, yes, okay. I wasn't at that one. Wasn't that the one where just, um, that was right. just, yeah. yeah, you weren't at that one, Mary. Yeah, I know. So is there a motion on those? Yeah, I'll, I'll move approval. I'll second. Okay, moved by Phil, seconded by Steve. All in favor of approving the minutes of the October 26th special meeting. Please say aye. 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 Oh, I don't think I was there. Abstain. At 10. I don't think I was there. You were. Uh, you were. You can abstain. I was. Okay. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Accepting Sarah Briget's resignation from the ZBA action likely. Did she send us a letter or just she did. She sent us a letter, just an email saying to whom it may concern, I resigned from the ZBA. So I didn't figure it was worth sending to you guys, but she did send oh. an email. Didn't we did just put her on that? Yeah. yeah. What happened? No, you just made her the assistant zoning administrator. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's why she had to step off the ZBA. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Move that we accept your resignation. There a second? Second. second. Mary. Okay. Yeah, well, Thank you. Give Mary, give Mary credit. Um, <laughs> all, all in favor of accepting Sarah's resignation from the ZBA, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, considering Adrian Megida's nomination to the Conservation Commission. Move approval. Did we, get, did, we, did we get a letter from her? No, the Conservation Commission yes. is recommending that, her, right? That's the process. Oh, we got a letter. Sarah sent it to us. It was an email. I can I can dig it out. I yeah. forwarded it to, you, to all of you. But, but the process is the Conservation Commission recommends her to us and right and the conservation they have the con i was notified by matt Schley on monday night that the conservation commission did recommend uh endorse a 100 percent endorsement of adrian Megida to join the conservation commission they have a meeting coming up on thursday so i think they'd like her to be able to attend i put that in the okay. email okay perfect so all in favor of appointing adrian Megida to the conservation wait mary moved who seconded all second <laughs> He's got it. Okay. All those in favor of appointing Adrian Megida to the Conservation Commission, please say aye. Uh, aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we've appointed her. Correspondent, Sarah. Uh, no, just some back and forth with FEMA, but other than that, nothing you need to concern yourselves with. Okay. And we've talked about the orders. We're mostly signed. We're still eight minutes ahead of schedule. Do you guys want to try to go into the, we'll what do you think about, about going into the executive session since this is pretty much the executive session group right here? Yep. You're gonna do, be able to do that in eight minutes, do you think? Well, they might wait. I have a, I downloaded an upgraded version of Zoom where I can talk to the people in the chat room so I could just tell them that we're in an executive session. Well, let's see if we can do it. Let's try and we can we can come out of executive session and go back in if we have to. I guess. Yep. So we just need a no, motion, and then we need to kick. Then we need to temporarily put some people in the waiting room. Yep. So a motion to go into executive session, and uh, we would include uh, Sarah and Dorinda and Shane and Victor. Yes. Is Victor on? He is. He is. Yep. He's being quiet tonight. He's looking a little lighter than usual. It must be it's getting dark outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll make the motion pursuant to the statutory requirements so stated in the agenda. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome. So uh, before we before we start going through this, uh, Dorinda, you mentioned you found a couple of addition errors. Are they significant? Do we need to? Um, yeah, and I didn't bring home the paperwork that I, I don't think. Well, wait a minute. Maybe I did. I can tell you. Um, okay. Um, uh, 
The first section, winter maintenance, that adds up to 61,880. Hold on a second, hold on. Yeah, I apologize, I don't know where I got. The 626, but. Okay, no, no, no. I missed something. Uh, right let me see. The. Um, yeah, 68 okay. instead of 62. 61. 61. Instead of 62, 600. 61, 80. 61, 880. Gotcha. And then the budget that was approved, the total budget last year for the whole highway was, or not the whole highway, would be expenses. It didn't include debt service was $728,869. And the new 722? 728, right. 869. 869, yeah. Okay. And, yeah. The, um, and the new budget that's been presented adds up to 743,468. So there must be one of those other categories that's different also. Oh yeah, um, under wages and benefits. He had plugged in, there was another one there, yeah. So wages and benefits under this year adds up to 337,913. But in the stuff that I sent out, which I think you will all receive this afternoon, yep. I noted we plugged in just as placeholders the current last year's budgeted amounts yeah. um, until we get past next week's meeting and we get our new insurance rates. Okay, so those, so those, that number is for the wages and benefits. That yes. portion would be three thirty seven nine thirteen for both years. Well, no, the year before it was three forty four sixty one. What page is that on? Because of the uniforms. Uh, the uniform went down though, right? Shane? No, right, yeah. I'm sorry, I just went by the budget sheet that I had that said that it was 333,821 for this year we're on. That's what it was in there as? Because I took the numbers out of the book. That was- Yeah, that's what it's bonus. in there. On the budget sheets that you uh, send me to see how much I've spent, um, it's in there as 333821. That's where I got that number from. Ah, well, and the one that yeah. got published was 34461. So I don't know. Okay. That's all right. Well, it good. doesn't matter. It it only... is the, wages and, the wages and benefits are going to change. Are going to change anyway. So yeah, right. yeah, that's a new you point. know, it's good to know. It's good to know roughly what it was last year. But in terms of what it's going to be next year, that's the subject of uh, the meeting yeah. next week. Right. No problem. Okay, thank you, Dorinda. So Shane, go ahead, go ahead, Shane or Victor, whoever's gonna. Well, I don't know how I'm supposed to do this. I've never done this before, so I've done the budget, but I've never had to present the budget. Well, I guess, and we can we can take this any way the the budget committee and the other board members would like to have it. I I guess. What I'm interested in is the basically the front page, the overview, and then any any major uh, changes in the detail. For instance, um, I noticed that we zeroed out pay mulch and netting and whatever the one above that is. Bitch oh, bitch lining. Yes, I was because about that, why those were zeroed out. But anyway, I don't, I don't think you need to go through page by page and line by line unless unless other people would like to do that. No, I zeroed those out because they hadn't gotten used yet, and I increased our gravel budget so we could resurface some roads next year that need it drastically. Yeah, but but what you're saying is. We have we have ditch lining material in stock, or yes. Well, when you if you're going to line ditches with stone, you don't want to really put fabric down if you're going to dig it back out and screen the stone anyway. 
it right. makes no sense to me. Okay. So, um, and then you have another category in there with ditch stone. So I just zeroed out that line and up the ditch stone Perfect. itself. There you go. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. And basically then fuel, I up fuel because we don't know what the fuel mm -hmm. prices are going to do this year. Same thing with heating. I upped all that just a little bit. Um, I tried to keep the budget pretty much the same. Um, we just felt between Vic and I, we might want to protect ourselves. I don't know what the fuel costs are going to do. Yeah. Everybody says they're going off big time. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So I figured we better add a little just to make sure. Yep. We, we looked at last year, uh, we looked at what we used and uh, what, what, the, uh, what it was budgeted 55 and uh, we just upped it a little bit. Yeah. Can, can we talk about the, uh, the road sand, the winter sand and the trucking? uh for a minute and just are we going to run through the big items and then ask specific questions um let's, i thought let's do that if you don't if you don't mind randy no I mean, that's fine okay so you just want me to say what i did for each category yeah sure all right, so winter maintenance, I upped it, um, the trucking part of it, and so it's a little bit more this year. In the summer maintenance, I dropped some things down, as you saw. So the summer maintenance is actually almost $4,000 less. Um, equipment maintenance, I upped a little bit. The price of materials, the price of everything has gone up. So we upped that by $7,750. Um, specialized services, I left alone. I left that the same. So, uh, we just pause for a minute. Don't, yeah. we didn't spend, we spent what, half of our specialized services this past year? Yes. And what do we spend it on? Uh, we use that half on the ditching on East Hill. Right. Right. So that money... That money is essentially, I mean, as it always does, if we don't spend it, it goes back into the general fund. Right. So, right. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, garage maintenance, I went down by 4,000. Um, utilities, I, like I said, I upped it a little bit. I don't know what the heating. Jane, can you tell us why it went up or down? I mean, what was your thinking about it? Other than just saying it went up four, went down four. I mean, like, for example. Why did you drop the maintenance on the building down for? The garage maintenance altogether. Well, I'll go through. I thought we were just going through the whole. Well, I mean, you know, you the summary is like overall the budget went up this amount or went down that. But I mean, there must have been the thinking behind it, like we're going to do different projects in the summer, so we don't need as much money as we did in the last year, or you know, whatever the reason are that your budget. Yes, yeah, so I, I dropped stuff down that I didn't think we needed to be as high next year, like small tools. I dropped it by 2,000. Fuel okay. tank maintenance, I dropped it by 2,000. Just to try to keep the budget down, for one. And for two, I felt with the tools that we have, we don't need that big um, expenditure on here for that with that much money. And when I uh, upped equipment maintenance, it was because of the cost of everything. And like I said, fuel, gas and diesel have gone up and are going up. So that's up. Wages, I didn't do anything with because I know that's going to change. And I did the same thing with highway miscellaneous. I tweaked some stuff where I didn't think we needed as much money because I went up in the construction a little bit. Where, where I thought we'd need more money to work on roads and do ditching projects. Now that's the whole list. Do you want me to go through stuff individually or? Well, let's let's respond. Let's respond to questions. I think that's the best way to do it rather than All right. line item unless everybody disagrees. So on garage maintenance, why did that go down 4,000 Shane? That was the 2000 for the fuel tank maintenance, which 
I left it at 500 because I really don't think we're going to spend that much money on fuel tank. And I went down 2000 in small tool purchase. Oh, those are the components. Gotcha. Yeah. So I do have a, I do have a question. I believe our intent was to build a roof over that fuel tank. Have we decided we're not going to do that? Well, we haven't had time for one and I've tried to talk to a couple contractors to see if anyone else has time. And with the price of materials, we decided to wait. We'll probably have to wait till next year at this point. We talked to a couple of people and uh, they weren't going to be available. And, uh, and and like Shane says, the materials were going to be kind of pricey. Oh, well, I think it's fine to wait. I just think yeah. ultimately it's a good idea to cover that. Yeah. Well, yeah, for one, so the guy, when he fills up the fuel tank or gets fuel, won't get wet, but yeah. Well, just, yeah. So it's, it's not off the radar. It's postponed is what you're saying. Right. Yep. I mean, the, you know, frankly, the big, the big elephant in the room on this is the, is the wages and benefits, guys. The rest of this stuff, as yeah. I looked through it, I didn't think there was a hell of a lot to talk about, to tell you the truth. I mean, as we know, you know, some of these items are going to move around. Some are actually going to be a little more and some are going to be a little less, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I appreciate the, I appreciate the, uh, the detail. Good job. And we can deal with it. We're going to be dealing with the, the hard part next week. Yep. Other questions, anyone? Budget committee. I have a I have a couple if if we're there. Sure. Um. So, uh, just noticing under culvert chain, we get a bunch of stuff coming up uh, on like Center Road and whatnot when they're uh, doing all that work next spring. Um, but the line item for culverts is going down. Is that covered underneath that paving bid and whatnot and not, not handled by the town? No, it's handled by us, but I already have the culverts for center road here. I bought those this year. Okay. okay. And I have more culverts actually ordered that are supposed to be incoming. So that'll just be for any extras we might need after the fiscal year next year. Number, I mean, this, the, the hard part about this always is, Randy, we're talking about the fiscal year, which starts next July. <laughs> yeah. No, a, abso absolutely. I, I, right. I get that. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Randy? Yeah, I think the only other question I had is just, uh, I was looking at uh, the... Um, the trucking and the sand for, and the winter maintenance. Um, and I, I was just curious on, um, with all the work that was done in the pit where, you know, obviously we're running about half the budget that we used to, um, for the, for the winter sand. Um, but is that due to, a, a just the amount of material that we pulled out of there doesn't cover um like a, a year's worth of of sand and you're spreading it out or what's that i guess i would know that, that covers a year's worth of sand so what is the what is the twenty one thousand dollars uh that's in the budget if we've got all that sand already stockpiled and whatnot uh, what does that go to oh no that, that goes to the that goes to next year's sand we got to do it all over again randy so right. we stockpiled 6,000 yards. And, you know, if we don't use it, that number, we might not use that whole number. But if we have a bad winter and use a lot of sand, so that covers the cost of the screening of the sand. The screening. Okay, that's what I was yes. getting it's at. Not it's, the not the it's not the material. It's not sand itself. It's screening. That's yep. what I was getting at. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Dorinda has a question. Yeah, Dorinda. Um, I just have a couple that um, I'm concerned about equipment repairs. Um, we're $16,000 over budget last year. We know 
what's been happening recently? Are we wise to leave that at twenty four thousand dollars? I thought they upped it. We upped the parts. Yeah, we upped the parts and supplies. But we, we just hope that nothing major happens. Hopefully we fixed everything. I mean, <laughs> if we're at 24,000 and we're, we're at, we've actually used just shy of 13,000. Um, I mean, that can be up right. if you guys want it up. I wasn't sure if we wanted to up that or just hope and pray that the truck and the excavator made it. Yeah, that's for this is for the following year, so we're gonna have a new truck. So right. And that's and that's first, first. Okay. Well, I and just was concerned because we were so far over and I know yeah. that we've had we have ongoing issues. So um and the other one was shop supplies. We um were at sixty three hundred dollars in June uh, that we ended last year's budget at, and we're only, I don't know why we were so high, but we're still budgeting 2000. I don't know why we're so high on shop supplies either. I mean, I took over halfway through the year, so um, not unless something got put under the wrong category. On the um, ash trees along the roads, is that five thousand dollars for that? Like, are we finding I'm, that they're falling and that we have to maintain them? We need to talk to the state and find out if there's any more because they had grant money available a couple of years ago, and they came around and marked all the ash trees. And what they wanted you to do was cut them down or pay to have them cut down, and everything left right there on the roadside. Um, so we're in Marshfield, they hired someone to come in and cut the bigger ones down and the road crew handled the smaller ones where they could. Um, but that's something that needs to be done is there's quite a few ash around town. Um, some of them I think we can take care of, but some of them we can't. So, uh, but I, I was gonna look for grant money for that. So we didn't have to spend all of our money because there was grant money. I'm not saying there still is, but there could be. So that's something we need to look into. Hey Shane, this is Paul. If if I can jump in, I I've got a couple questions, and I can make a comment on the uh, the ash tree inventory. Uh, Sorsha Anderson, uh, while I was still there, uh, had had kind of started uh, an inventory uh, of some means, and was I believe was going to use the conservation commission's help to to do inventories. I think they were were looking at some funding from from the state, or or maybe even. Uh, uh, local roads or something like that she would she would be one to and I could get you her contact or Sarah could but but she had initiated that I, I want to say she had tapered off from that project but when when okay. everything really first started coming in hard she she had definitely uh, kind of initiated that process so she would be one at least you could pick up whatever crumbs or, or beginnings she had started on that um, right. you could definitely contact her uh, the other question I had uh, was roadside mowing. It, I, I know it looked like some mowing had started to be done, but it didn't look like, like it had been finished this year. I may be wrong on that. I just wanted to see where that was at for this coming year. No, it was a nightmare this year. We got a flail mower because that was all. We didn't hire it out. I wanted to do it ourselves because you get more out of it. And the flail mower broke down twice and then we never got it back so we just decided we were getting late in the year and we canceled it and i've got them scheduled next year for two weeks in june and two weeks in august okay and and just to go off of what randy was asking so we're we're looking pretty good in regards to winter sand for for the following year what's available in the pit and kind of that investment right. we we all kind I mean, of gambled on is, is looking that it's still going to continue to pay dividends, I, I assume. It looks, I mean, from what I can see, um, it looks really good. There's one layer of clay in between the sand, but the sand we got into this year is some pretty decent looking stuff. Um, 
And I'd like to think we could get a year or two out of it before it tapered, but maybe longer, I don't know, till we get digging around even deeper. No, fantastic. No, that's great. Um, no, and then the only other thing, and, and I've got a little bit of vested interest in it, and so does Steve, but in regards to the fuel tank, it's great to see that you guys have done some preliminary homework. I would just urge to, to really continue that, even if we kind of lock someone in for, for next June or something like that, only because if, if I expressed how much work and money had went into removing that underground tank and how you know, we kind of treated this above ground tank like a newborn. <laughs> Just, I've got some vested right. interest there. So I, I would, I would love to see that come to fruition. Even if we kind of locked someone in for, for later in the summer, I, I know how busy contractors are. So I'd love to see yeah. that progress keep going forward. Oh, absolutely. No, we're trying. I've got phone calls out to people. <laughs> I'm sure. No, I get it's it. Great. Back. Thanks, Shane. You're Steve, welcome. you want a question or comment? Steve? No, no. Okay. Tara's got one. Chair, I have a cloud. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. What are specialized services? Is that that $40,000 you guys going to put toward East Hill Road? It's, it's hiring a subcontractor to do projects that we don't have the time to do ourselves. Okay. Was that a separate article back in 2020? A separate, yes. like it was, right? Yes. What? I think it was, yes. yes. It was? No. It was, it no, was it wasn't the no, part of the budget. It was okay. part of the budget. That's it was right. part of the budget. So the the specialized services that doesn't roll over every year. That's just you just put it. You but like last, I'm looking at twenty thousand dollars. So originally you had forty thousand dollars one year. I think that was what the voters passed in twenty twenty or twenty nineteen. I forget. Right. Maybe twenty twenty. So then you had forty thousand dollars. So now you're taking it down to twenty thousand dollars. And will that be used for East Hill Road or? People care about this, believe me. They want to know well, what it'll be used for. It might have to help us with center road in the spring. I don't know. I mean, if we okay, don't so have time to do it all, we might have to hire someone to help us. If not, then yeah, I will do something more on another road. So it's not the project. It's just the fact that that's used to hire people outside of the road crew to supplement the work. Absolutely. Exactly. Yes. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Is it, is it be easy enough to change that to subcontracted services or something that's not, I mean, I, I agree with Sarah that, that, I, oh, yeah, that, okay. that the voters, the voters look at that and uh, it generates a lot of conversation. So as, as transparent as that can be, um, I, I don't know how easy it is for you to just change the line, the names of the line items, but calling that subcontracted services or something like that would make more sense to me. So here's, here's the only problem with that, Randy, and we get into this almost every year, is every time when we change categories around or change names of categories or put things in different categories, we cause confusion. So the, the question is, you know, my take would be people have been seeing specialized services. They've heard it talked about the last three or four years. Maybe we leave it alone, but that's just that's just my thought. I, I if we were starting out with it, I agree. Subcontracted services would be better. I think that from the from at least from my viewpoint and the folks that I talk with, whenever the special um, services comes up, they're looking to see that attached to a specific project. Right. Um, so to have it as kind of a a catch-all and a slush fund, if you will, to, to help out here or there, I think is going to generate quite a bit of confusion uh, in itself okay. and, and conversation. I can, see your, I can see your point, Randy, uh, but uh, when you put out subcontractor uh, services, it, it, it indicates that you're going to hire a subcontractor. If, if our excavator breaks down and we have to do, uh, for example, ditching or culverts, and we have to rent an item, we would use it for that. I, I, so, under, so, I understand. So what? I understand that you're looking for some a place to put some flexible money. It's called um, insurance. No, that's not, that's not it. Well, that's what it, that's what it sounds like to me. Nobody can talk about what it's really there for. And it's, well, this, it might be used for that. It might be used for this. It's flexible money, Steve. 
started out as very specific projects, as I recall, and I think we are going back two years before the current year. Um, and I can't remember off the top of my head, but there were some very, very specific things that we were doing that we had focused that money on. I um, think we did a lot of it for mud season mitigation. That's uh, what we for. And my recollection is we actually didn't use it. It was a special vote. That was my recollection, a special vote. And it was a big to do. And then we never actually spent the money. I thought we did. We did all In the, the first year, I don't think we did. Steve. Which, which right. was a problem because, you know, we weren't able to get the, remember how we're behind on the roads and the mud mitigation? That was my no. recollection. I think we spent it, I think we spent it the first year because that's when we did those three, those three projects. I can't remember, to tell you the truth. I, I mean, Randy, I believe me, we want to be as transparent as we, as we can be. And uh, when we have, when we have a big project like, like Center Road, you know, I mean, we could, we could say right now, it's likely we're going to use the, that uh, specialized services for Center Road, because I'm sure we're going to have way more than that in expenses there. And well, I mean, it is. we're going to need to hire subcontractors, <laughs> those Hi, people, et cetera, et cetera. Hi, to uh, clarify, the first time it was budgeted was the FY 2021 budget, and it was for $40,000. Last right. year, we cut $20,000 out of it. Right. Was it always a line item or was the 40000 a special article? Always a line item. It was a line item. It was wasn't a special article. Good. Right. I, I didn't remember a special article. That's why I'm and originally it was budgeted so much for trucks, so much for excavator rental, and six thousand dollars towards a month's worth of wages. Right. And that that was to handle the ditching projects that at that point in time the the road crew wasn't able to handle, if I remember correctly. Right. right. And then last year we moved the budget item from we created a line item under special services that said subcontractor. OK. And that, that budget, just for your information, that budget last year was more than twenty thousand dollars. Originally, I had put in, I think it was thirty two thousand right. and I cut twelve thousand out of the budget at the at the end of our budget meeting. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions for Shane or Victor? Anybody? So as I said, as I said a while ago, um, the big elephant in the room is going to be the wages and benefits that we're going to talk about next week. <clears throat> And we're going to be spending some money there for sure. Okay, then. Any, any we're way ahead of schedule. What? Go ahead, Mary. I said we're way ahead of schedule. And that Thanks. is the bad news why? <laughs> no, I mean, because we don't have our... Um, we don't have whatever we have. We have that BCA meeting, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Can I just, while I got the budget committee here, just remind you guys that we're going to have a special meeting on Tuesday, the 9th, to talk about wages. So, yeah, and of course you'll be here, wages and compensation. Same, same bad time, 5 p.m. Okay? Good to know. So you guys will start at 5 or budget workshop at 5 or? It's all it's going to be is just money, money, money. 5 o'clock. And then good. I... I think they'll probably go into and then they'll probably go to a regular meeting to talk about amending the personnel uh, thing. So by that, by that time, you guys can leave. Does that work for your schedule? That's Tuesday the 9th. Tuesday 9th. So you guys good with me? Am I done for the night? I think they is. I would say, I would say you are done. Well done. All right. Well, yeah. And also, so I, I, I really appreciate James, the way you, uh, presentation. 
the way you laid this out. And I know you haven't done this before, but good yeah. job. Good job. Nice. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Vic. Thank you, Shane. Victor. Thank you, guys. Did you guys um, see Christian before your meeting? Did he go over the capital spending plan with you guys today? Yeah. Yeah, we okay. were with him before this. Did that go okay? Yeah, I think so. It was, you know, sort of another run through of of the process and a chance, I think, for a sort of work through. I don't know, Mark and Mark, especially, you've been through it less than, than I have. Would you? So, yeah, I think Christian's got a pretty good start here to a process, and uh, we walked through just some specific scenarios and how they they would play out. And we spent a fair amount of time in the in the uh, capital expense planning workbook. So I think which was helpful for all of us to see what uh, Christian's objective was in terms of spreading out capital allocation to um, to create as much as possible and smoothing of the tax rate when needed. So I think it was very educational. You know, he, obviously he knows this stuff and he's, he's certainly willing to meet with us again if needed. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Who's Christian? He's from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission helping us with the capital spending plan. And he met with the budget oh. committee today before this meeting. Christian Meyer, right? Yeah. Okay, everyone good? Thank you very much, Budget Committee. All right, thank you. Awesome, we'll adjourn the Budget Committee. <laughs> See y'all. Um, so I think <laughs> the last thing on our select board agenda is uh, seeking a letter of support for an ice rink grant. And Mitch, I presume that's why you are here. That is correct. Go right ahead. Okay, uh, well, in a nutshell, I had some conversations with some folks involved with Rumney a few weeks ago. They basically indicated that they would love to see an ice rink reestablished this year. I think they, it's something we've done years ago, but it hasn't happened for a few years. And I said, I don't have the means to do it all by myself, but if people are interested, I would be happy to help facilitate this. And so far, so good. Um, I have put together a very crude budget and in a nutshell, I think I can get a rink built for between $5,000 and $5,500. Um, some of this is going to be for materials that will be largely reusable for several years. So it's not something where I'm going to come back asking for the same kind of money every year. But um, one of the things I found out recently was that the AARP does a placemaking event once a year. And I attended a workshop last week. And as part of this program, they are offering six $4,000 grants for something they call winter placemaking. And I've talked to the folks there and they think that what I'm proposing is the sort of thing that no guarantees, of course, but they said, this is the sort of thing they would be interested in looking at. So I'm putting together a grant proposal. Uh, the application deadline is Friday, November 12th. And one of the required elements is a letter of support from a town body, such as the select board. So sorry for the short notice, but I would like to get a letter of support for this project. And um, I'm going to be looking to some other organizations, mostly affiliated with Rumney, to provide some additional letters of support to help make our grant as solid as I can get it. And I'd be happy to answer some questions if you've got them. So I have a couple of questions, Mitch. Sure. So if the, I presume, I presume a lot of the labor is going to be volunteer labor. Yes. And if the cost is 5,500 and the grant is 4,000, is there money in the recreation budget for the 1,500? Um, I will have to look into this. One of the things I'm looking at is, hey, does the school, I, I sort of guess the school doesn't have money laying around that they haven't figured out what to do with. 
But um, that's the other thing I've talked to the group of people I'm interested in is, hey, we're going to, I think I can come up with most of the money, but we're going to have a little shortfall. Do we want to pass the hat? Does anybody have any ideas about who can, how we can come up with, you know, it's not a ton of money. I don't think that we'll have trouble asking right. for some donations and getting there, but um, but yeah, this whole project presumes that I can pay for it. I'm not going to come okay, to so the town and so say- So at this point in time, you're asking for the use of town land and permission to go ahead with this project. You're not asking us for money. Correct. Okay. Wait a minute, wait so, a minute. In, in the budget you presented, you had a $500 line item for it. That's next year. Oh, That's okay. So this year, this you're going to do during the current year. Correct. Oh, okay. Okay. And so, I'm sorry. Are you billing for your time to do this work? I guess I, I um, want to know that sort of like the perhaps work that you a do little bit, but um, I'm hoping to not invest too much of my time in it. But um, it what I would put in would not be beyond the scope of my normal recreation work. Um, I don't mind volunteering a little time myself, but that's all it needs for this thing to happen. But um, yeah, Thank I'm, just, you. I'm not doing this as a way to generate money from the town for my pocketbook, that's for certain. Okay. And my other question is, where is the rink? Where would the rink be built in the, in the place behind the school where it was before? Um, I proposed a couple of ideas. Those, that was one for... <laughs> Reasons I'm not sure of, the school said they would prefer not to do it there. They would actually prefer to build it on the tennis basketball courts, which isn't probably my ideal location, but I think it would work for this year. But longer term, that's not really, I don't think that's a great place for an ice rink myself. But um, another so, possibility to build it on the recreation field itself. Gonna kill the, gr kill the grass. Um, um, so well, isn't the I thought land, about that. Oh, go ahead. Help me out, Mitch. So isn't the land where the rink was previously, which is directly behind the school, that was school land, correct? That is school land. Right. And actually, that's a question, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on that tonight, but I was going to ask Liz about this, and Peter, maybe you know. When I started doing recreation director stuff, um, seemed to me that Bill Callan suggested to me that the shed behind the school and the basketball slash tennis court are town property, they not are. school property. They okay, are. I, I don't know that for a fact, but I thought at some point they it probably would be interesting to they verify that. So, they definitely okay. are town property. Okay, very good. Um, I, I, I guess my concern is just, you know, we're in a process of I guess I would say negotiating, reaching an understanding with the school about what the town's use of the school building and school property is. Yep. And they have not been very welcoming so far, to say the to say the least. Yeah, that's... Um, they seem to think that they that in our in our uh, I guess it's a purchase and sales agreement, but basically we gave them our school building that we would be able to use it for town meeting every year, but they don't, they seem very reluctant to have us use it for anything else, which is not my understanding of what the deal was. But I just yeah. want to be very careful when we're dealing with the school that we keep the lines clear. Right. I understand so that too. This is going to be, if this is going to be a town project, if there's a way to do it on town land, I think that's better. Then it's in our control. Okay. No yep. question about who who supervises it or or deals with it or whatever it is. The minute it's on school property, they're going to start acting like it's their rank. In my opinion, right. I understand that, and I guess that's probably a vote in in the favor of the current proposal. So, I guess I could live with that. But yeah, I understand, and I will. The other, I will. Be, the other thing I don't understand, just just to let me finish, is what the potential harm or damage to the basketball court is if we put the hockey rink on top of that pad. Right. Is it likely to damage it? Is it, I, I have no idea, but it yeah. sounds like crack a bad it. idea to me. Crack it, yeah, it sounds like a bad idea to me because it might crack all of it. Well, 
Um, yes, I've, I've talked to people in recreation programs in several different towns, uh, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I'll say some people don't like building ice rink on a hard court because they say it sort of helps let the ice, the frost penetrate deeper, which could degrade the foundation. Um, my thought is that the current tennis court is in such bad shape that doing this for one year isn't going to make a substantial difference. I don't know that I necessarily want to do it long term this way, but if that's just something that will let us get going this year, I'm willing to give it a try. But what I'm working on is something that's going to be flexible. It'll be portable. We can move it different places if we find a different, different sort, a different location that's better. And as far as killing the grass, I do know that City of Montpelier builds an ice rink on the State House lawn the past few winters, and the grass comes back pretty quick in the summertime. It greens up, and I don't think if we were to move it to, for example, the recreation field longer term, I don't think that's going to be a problem either. But Okay. For several reasons, I think I want to try the tennis court this year. What I would add, what I would ask you to do, Mitch, is just when you have this more organized as to how it's going to work and where it's going to be sure. and what it's going to be, is just come back to us and let us say, "Yep, that sounds good." When Absolutely. We get to the, yep, when we I'm get going to be putting this, together this. a more solid budget, and I'm working with the volunteer folks to kind of lay out a schedule. Here's the things we have to do. Here's the volunteer staffing we have to come up with, and that's going to let okay. us, or we'll either have a, a warming hut available, at least temporarily, just depending on what we get for volunteers. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working all that out. I will be happy to come back to you and talk to you about what this is going to look like before winter comes. Okay, the last time we used that warming hut as a warming hut, it was a nightmare. It got trashed and damaged and everything under the sun so what i will do is make sure that it's only open when there's a volunteer there to supervise so okay well let's get back to us i'm i am i for me yes sir. I, I think what mitch needs is a letter of support by a certain deadline isn't that That's right what i was about to say okay i am comfortable recommending that we offer a letter of support with the understanding that he's going to come back to us with final details of exactly how this is going to work and how it's yeah. going to be funded Yep. If you want me to write a letter and somebody signs it, I'm happy to do that. If you've done this sort of thing before and know what you want to write, I don't mind somebody else writing it either. Sarah can write the letter. I'll sign it. Okay. I will get Sarah details. Uh, that's assuming, but wait a minute. Okay. Um, we probably need a motion, a motion to do that. Would somebody make that motion, please? Move that we uh, provide a letter of support for the uh, ice rink project. Is there a second? I'll second. Mary. Mary, Mary and Steve, the Mary and Steve show. <laughs> Steve this time, Mary. Uh, okay, it's been moved and seconded that we provide Mitch with a letter of support for his uh, grant application for the ice rink. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Mitch. Thank you very so much. As soon as Sarah has that ready, I'll, I'll hold on a second, Dorinda. As soon as Sarah has that ready, I'll stop down and sign it and she'll let you know or I'll let you know and you can pick it up. Very good. Thank you much. What's your deadline? Uh, no, Friday the 12th, I... a week from Friday. Oh, okay. So we have time. Okay. Yep. Good. Dorinda. Before Mitch leaves, I have a question for next year's budget. Um, and it's kind of a question to him and a question to the board. Last year, we had put a facility maintenance fund in the budget. Um, and put $500 in that as a line item. Um, I guess, first of all, there's nothing budgeted for that. Yes, for FY23. And was that $500 supposed to get moved to an actual fund that wrote, that's accumulated? Or was that um, a one-time thing or? Well, my hope was to start putting aside a small amount, maybe even as little as $500 each year with the goal of using that for maintenance, particularly the tennis and basketball courts. But I believe I failed to check in with you guys to see 
I know in some cases, budget items don't carry over. They're supposed to be spent the year they're allocated. Always. And I, is that always the case? Yeah, well, like, oh, it, unless, uh, you, unless you establish, unless we establish a fund where it accumulates. Okay. For instance, we have a bridge fund, a paving fund. Right, and those do go in the line item budget and then we move it, that, that okay. money out of the line item into a fund. But there was $212 spent in last year's budget. So that's why I'm confused. Is it a fund or is it an expense account or okay. what's I, going on? Okay, I will apologize for not being an accountant. I should probably talk to you at some time when you don't have a million things going on. Maybe that's never. But, um, <laughs> I would like to, I would like to have a better idea about how I can, you know, set up responsible budgeting to kind of help with things like maintenance, but without, I don't want to also obviously confuse your accounting processes. So, okay. So I'll be so happy to talk we... to you about that later, but. Um, okay. So for now, I'll just leave that with, I mean, you want some money for maintenance is what you're saying. So should we right. plug something in there? Yes. Well, I think we've deferred maintenance on the, Again, the, the big ticket item is the tennis court. Um, we've deferred maintenance on that for a while and I need to, I am working on trying to get a better handle on just what it's gonna cost to renovate that space so it's more usable. And um, I would like to have a better picture of just how we're doing that year to year so that it's not, I don't wanna wait you know, to some year and say, oh, we're going to spend a bunch of money this year and then I won't bother you guys again. I'd rather put a little money in each year so that we kind of keep it in good shape. Okay. Um, well, it's going to be a long time. We're going to be putting in $500 for 20 years before we, have, or more before we have enough. We need to get some kind of a grant or something to do that tennis right. court. Uh, that's, I'm, I'm doing some research on that as well. Okay. Thank you, Mitch. All right. Yes, guys. Sarah. Just to be clear, um, that made that facility fund for the recreation department is that something that is a pre-existing fund that the voters voted on? Do you guys know? I can go check on the motions. Okay. It really was, no, it was a line item budget, but we have right. we do it with bridges and we do it with uh, something else that it falls in the line paving. item, but then paving. we move paving and then we move it into a special market fund. Okay, um, so I'm just saying that if you're going to roll over money every year, you have to have a, the voters have to create a fund. So they've somewhere along the line they've created a bridges fund, a paving fund. Yeah, probably years ago, 20 years ago. Oh, I don't to know. roll it over. You have to do that. So I guess that's my question, Mitch. If you're interested in doing that, that's probably something you should talk about with the board to right. create. Well, yeah, I I think you know I've talked to Dorinda before, and I do understand that we have a paving fund. Last I remember talking to her, there was something like maybe $1,700, maybe a little more in there. But um, that was the fund I was anticipating we would use for resurfacing the tennis court at some point. But it's but, um, actually maybe... a rec. There is a recreation fund already existing. Oh, okay. Good. That's all you need. At some point, okay. the voters must have created it. Yep. All right. Well, okay. I, I will. Be happy to chat about that at a time where you're not swamped in other work but um okay well anytime just give me a call all right i will shoot you an email all righty all right thank Thanks, you much Mitch. anything Thanks, else Mitch. for the select board meeting before we move to the bca meeting okay so, so I just will... to if just to, uh, as for scheduling purposes, what we'll do is on on uh, the ninth, start off with the budget committee, do all the budget committee stuff, move that, then do the um, amending the personnel plan and then and or policy, and then be done. Does that make sense? Does that order work for you guys? When you you want to... Doing the budget, we're going to talk about the salaries of our employees. That's right. But my only concern is that if we amend the personnel policy, then you might have an idea about whether or not you can, when you're talking about compensation, dealing with all this yeah. other stuff. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. I just, just tell me which goes first. <laughs> That's all I care about. 
amending amending the personnel policy goes first and then the and then the uh yeah. compensation okay thank you that was the direction i needed okay so we are adjourning the select board meeting and liz you are on for the bca meeting okay is chris mcveigh here he said he was going to join so far all we have is uh jan's okay. here theo's here i just saw theo Okay, why don't we just wait a minute because Chris said he was going to join. It's 628 right now. Does everyone mind if we wait? No. Okay, and if he doesn't join no. by 630, I'll start. Right. It was warned for 630 anyway. Right. So what's the joke of the day, Liz? <laughs> um, nothing. <laughs> We, we were we were supposed to leave our office because the airflow stopped working they didn't want us to catch covid without good airflow so we had to go home <laughs> and we can't go into the office tomorrow that's a great start on being i wonder how the state's doing with all their employees coming back in the office i'm getting my booster on thursday and planning to be sick on friday or oh, and Theo, with... congratulations on being a grandfather. Is this your first time? So sweet. Hello, everybody. Yeah, it is. And I'm wicked excited. Just a little wow. boy name. Was this even... one of your daughters or do you have an older son? I think you might have. Uh, it's uh, my eldest daughter. I uh, had a little boy named Miles. Is that Miles? Miles? That's my son's name. I know. It's <laughs> is that or do you have another daughter? Yeah. yeah, no, you've not met her. She's older okay. than I am. She's 35. So. <laughs> I thought you had a different daughter. I was like, I don't think Anya had a baby, but if she did, yeah. good honor. Not yet. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you. And is she nearby? In Providence, Rhode Island. And okay. We'll go down and visit. Fun. Yeah. That's fun. Thank you. I can I can give you some some counseling on how you spoil grandchildren if you need any. <laughs> I'm an expert. All right. Well, it's six thirty. Um, Chris has not joined, um, so let's uh, call the uh, Board of Civil Authority to order at six p.m. Um, six thirty. I'm sorry, six thirty p.m. Do we have any guests? We have Jan, Theo. Oh, there's Jan. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Randy. Is there anyone else who's not on the board? Orca. Okay. Um, all righty, so feedback on the legislative apportionment board's district, legislative district reapportionment. On October 15, 2021, the legislative apportionment board completed the first phase of its detailed review of the impact of the 2020 U.S. Census population changes in Vermont towns and cities and on the existing legislative districts. The lab has requested boards of civil authorities to respond with feedback before November 15, 2021. Uh, Middlesex and East Montpelier are still merged, though part of East Montpelier will align with Callis action likely. And then we just got an email in, sort of an 11th hour email that Callis had met and had a discussion. And Sarah, if you wouldn't mind, um, if you could explain to us a little bit about um, what what this means, because I have a, actually a fairly hard time understanding um, sort of your role in this and, and what this would look like um, if we were to change. Well, so far, there's not really any change to Middlesex. Right now, uh, the way to, the, what, we were part of Washington Five, and uh, we were, it was one, it was all of Middlesex and all of East Montpelier. Then I guess Middlesex lost 7.3% of population, or our district, our Washington Four lost, our, our, together we lost 7%. Uh, so I guess Callis gained. No, that's wrong, whatever. There was a 7% loss in Middlesex. I'm looking at the map right now. <clears throat> I'm gonna share the, um, I can share that okay. map. Actually, yeah, one of the things I've got here is that, so 
it's really hard to I, I printed out a map of comparing the two the two districts before and after and it looks like oh Liz has got it good excellent I'm just gonna should I bring up Middlesex does that make sense I, to... I have this I have this I have the exact same thing so yes so Washington four which is the new proposed district is as you can see a little smaller than Washington five which used to be East Montpelier and uh, Middlesex um, now to even to even it out to create a, a to uh, to even out the district that what they did was they took off a little bit of East Montpelier and gave it to um, here comes John yeah. and gave it to I'm sorry just having a hard time hitting this uh, Callus so now Callus is saying well actually this isn't the most equitable distribution um, and what you really want to do is is merge all of Callis and all of East Montpelier together and just cut off Middlesex and where we would go I'm not sure I don't know if we would go with Worcester I don't know what would happen in Middlesex but because part of East Montpelier is cut off and given to Callis in this proposal that means that the only town that's that remains whole which is Middlesex that town would be the seat of the legislative district such as it is. That means I would be the clerk for Washington four. But other than that, I can't see anything that's any different. It would be really weird. And I don't understand what would happen if we cut off uh, Middlesex from East Montpelier, which is now represented by Kim Jessup. We have one representative and that's Kim Jessup and she lives in Middlesex. So I don't know what would happen to them. Maybe, Nan I guess they would have to find somebody else. So that's, that's the that's the scuttlebutt going around, and it, that's just back. That is just the response from the Callis informational meeting. And I guess what we have to do is just fill out a questionnaire for the legislature that says, um, you know, what are we, what what have we reviewed, and what do we recommend, and what do we want changed? Has East Montpelier had its meeting yet, sir? No, they're going to have their meeting on Tuesday, next Tuesday. So we don't know what they're going to say. We don't know what they're going to say. But a change, like if Callis, if Callis' suggestion of taking um, all of East Montpelier, that would affect like our House of Representatives, right? That would affect Kim Jessup, like in future elections. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Kim's from Middlesex, so they couldn't elect her. Right. But I don't understand is. So that's all well and good if they do that, but then it, as you said, Liz, who do we get hooked up with then? Yeah, I think that we well, should go on record as saying that we do not want to be merged with any town that we haven't already been merged with in the recent past. So we don't end up saying, hey, we're happy. Uh, and then we end up being with Worcester. So, so can I ask, is Washington three, does Wash is Worcester currently in Washington three? I have to go look at the map. I've just printed it out. Um, yes, Worcester is currently part of Washington Three, Callis, and Woodbury. It looks like. Oh wow, that was a plan ages ago that they were going to be part of that. Okay. Um, Wouldn't we say we would prefer we would prefer to stay aligned with East Montpelier? Yeah. I mean, I. I I understand what Callis is saying, but I mean, that sounds like a land grab to me. They want to—they want to suck up all of East Montpelier. Yes. Yes. That's pretty bold. Yeah. What would they? What would they get out of that? What's the advantage? They um, <clears throat> probably a, 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 a smaller district geographically, because if they're just going to be do Callis and East Montpelier, that's a lot smaller than what the Washington Three looks like right now. What's Washington three right now? That's well, Worcester, Worcester I'm California. assuming it's what's up there with the little appendage added on. Yeah. I can't so, see it printing in front of it. This says um, the Callis BCA held their informal meeting last night that included the representative Janet Ansel along with members of the public. The consensus came out that the discussion was that the East Montpelier sliver is ridiculous. They'd prefer to get the Adamant community more of a direct connection, though, although density is lacking and the district as a whole makes little sense. They expect to um, 
be submitting feedback suggesting that Calais and East Montpelier become a single district. The numerical fit is actually slightly better than Middlesex slash East Montpelier, Calais slash East Montpelier. How about if we say that we'd like to have it just be Middlesex and East Montpelier, Calais can go wherever they go. <laughs> Is that is that little sliver added on just to equal out the numbers? Probably. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure. But can I just ask a question right now? Middlesex, because I'm having a hard time. I, I can't see town lines in this thing. Um, and Sarah, maybe you know. So if we choose Middlesex, um, here's Middlesex right here. Uh, yeah. Here's what's washington 7-1 is that montpelier but those are all those are two montpelier districts okay and then east montpelier over here right. um right now we have all of east montpelier except for this little pink sliver which is adamant is that correct oh, I, I think that's included i think that's being added on oh that's being added on right so i'm sorry over here on the right i i'm sorry so right. on the right east montpelier we have everything including adamant adamant exactly right. well you know i'm just looking at this map from last year so if we it would be really weird to cut off middlesex because worcester i guess worcester would have to break worcester is a two county um or right. it was it's a two, two seats it's, it's got it's it's worcester is in washington county but it merges for the in the legislative district with lamoille so it's like I could see that they were trying to oh. keep Wall of Worcester in Washington County with Woodbury, mm. Callis, and Worcester because Elmore is in Lamoille County because as it currently exists, Worcester is part of Elmore, Morristown, and Woodbury, which are, you know, uh, yeah. least, that's just seems weird. So I think that's what they were trying to do. So Callis is currently with Marshfield and Plainfield and doesn't like that for some reason. Callis is and currently with Marshall the proposed is that Callis becomes Worcester, Woodbury, and a sliver of East Montpelier. That's right. And they're saying, no, we don't want that. We want Callis to be Callis and East Montpelier. And Middlesex Done. can go figure out their own thing. <laughs> is that what they're that. saying? That's right. I think it, you said it perfectly. And we don't have exactly what we don't want. Yeah. Mind you. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, I mean, I think from, so we're, we're losing a little bit, which is a little weird. I agree that it's a little weird um, that we lose Adamant and I feel bad for the Adamant people. I'm curious to see what East Montpelier is going to say, right? Like what that's, is their feeling on that? That's a big one. Right. They're the one who stands to actually lose, you know, right. um, lose part of their people, like, their next door neighbor is going to be voting for someone different. Did anybody, by the way, ask Kim Jessup to come tonight? No, because no. this is a BCA meeting. I know, but I mean, Janet oh, Ansel. Yeah. No, I should have. Yeah. Yeah, Janet Ansel just happened to be at the BCA meeting. Well, to be, to be fair, I didn't, I, I had absolutely no idea about this callous thing until about yeah. three o'clock this afternoon. So it was kind of right. it seemed like status quo pretty much except for a tiny yeah. part of east montpelier not getting and it wasn't going to change much of anything and it wasn't going to change our roles too much um but now that callus appears to be at the 11th hour saying they're going to submit something not the 11th hour but that they're going to submit a change i would say that i mean my recommendation is that we um you know request that it stays um the way that they recommend it i guess right yeah yeah. That we're fine with the recommendation. This, this is Theo. I support that actually, but can I just ask, as a matter of process, because these things aren't going to be finalized until May, and certainly the legislature is not in session until January. What, what is the timeline for our response here? Can we wait and learn the East Montpelier position? Well, yeah. we're, supposed to, we're supposed to respond by November fifteenth, which is right down the right. Believe it or not, or right around the corner. That's a week from yesterday. No, well, two weeks from yesterday. I, would, I just would add that it feels a little bit like overreaching to me on the part of Callis. Yeah. Um, I mean, this seems to be a sugaring out of the census data and we lose a chunk, but I, I support the 
request to otherwise stay intact with their recommendation. I think we should wait East Montpelier's weighed in. Ask what, him. What I guess the question is, do we, and we might, might we have, to have another BCA meeting, but we seem to be having nothing but meetings. I mean, does it make sense to have Liz as the chairman of the BCA to reach out to the East Montpelier BCA and say, what are you guys thinking? Why not? Yeah, yeah. No, why not? That. But I, I think we should reach out with a proposal rather than just saying, what are you thinking? Tell them this our, is what we're thinking. We, we, would, we would like, with their concurrence, we would like to keep the, the recommendation as it stands right? And, and still be aligned with them. Right. You know, and part, part of their interest is that they already know Kim. Yeah, yeah I think they're not going to be happy with losing a piece to Callis. What happens if Callus doesn't take that small piece? They're they're completely changing. Callus they, is that's why Callus isn't happy. They're completely they don't they're have losing. a choice. It's all done by the legislature. Yeah. They can win, right. in, but they they don't get to say forget it. Okay. It's all done by the legislature, and it's all going to be written. I mean, right. I'm I'm going to gather, can... it was a four three recommendation, and the chair of the committee voted against it. So I mean, it doesn't come in very strong with the way it's come in. I mean, that's so, so not Mary, the, but you know what really guys we the chair Liz should be pointing people so that we, we have a like an yeah. organized system of talking. <clears throat> Mary, like, what would you like to say continue what your, your thought. Uh, now I forgot what I was going to say so. Um, I, I, all I'm saying is the good news is if, if East Montpelier agrees with us that makes our case stronger. The bad news is this was a 4-3 decision by the commission and the chair didn't vote for it, Tom Little, an incredibly sensible person. And so I think the legislature is gonna feel really free to redraw the lines. And so I think it's a long road ahead. He didn't ahead. vote for this re the redrawing? No. Mary, he didn't vote for this re redrawing? He did not. He was one of the three who voted against it. And so I, I think that it would be great if we can solidify our, our relationship with East Montpelier and get them to support us. And that's why I think it'd be nice for you to touch bases with Kim too. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'll definitely get in touch with Kim. Because she'll know um, everything for the civil authority as well. Are there any other comments that people want to make? Yes, Sarah? I would, I would, I Sure. So I think that the I think that uh, these backroom negotiations are great, but I also think that one of the purposes of having this meeting is to um, is to state the board of civil authorities' position. I think we ought to take a vote and say that you know come out instead of waiting for what other towns are doing to come out and say the board yeah. of civil authority in, in Middlesex you know strongly unanimously recommends that we stay with East Montpelier. Uh, for a, a host of logical reasons. And that way we can lead the way as opposed to waiting for what everybody else is saying. So how long has our district been connected with East Montpelier? Mm -hmm. Like this. And plus, we should point out that if Callus got appendicitis, they'd be screwed. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know how long it changed. Wouldn't you no want to take COVID? <laughs> Uh, I guess, I guess, in, in, Peter, I guess, I guess in, uh, in thinking about this, so I like, uh, I like Sarah's approach. Let's take the high road and let's, let's say that. And at the same time, uh, Liz, reach out and, and let East Montpelier know that we've done that. And we'll see what happens. I, I, I agree with Mary when it, when it's a, a split decision, chances are all kinds of crazy stuff's going to happen before this is finalized. And it will all be done in the house because this is uh, this is the house, and the house draws their lines, and the Senate draws their lines. Right. Are there any other comments that people want to make? Yes. Yes, Sarah. So we have this uh, we have this feedback form we have to fill out, and while we're all here, I just want to if we could just give our answers so that we can answer the feedback form, you know, entirely. Unless you want to do it, Liz. But um, so like no, you can do it. But... <laughs> Go ahead. 
I mean, descriptions of recommends to be changed, we don't want to do that. But if we go to question 10, rationale and comments, what are our rationale and comments that we can put into this feedback form that we have to submit before November 15th about why we want to stay with East Montpelier? I guess it would help if we knew how long we'd been with them. Well, I bet I bet it's going back to Tony Klein. Yeah, and well, well yeah. I would say around you know relationship building with our legislature um, yeah. and the relationship building with their community, and to you know sort of throw in a new community that they're not familiar with is going to be a challenge. I think <laughs> that could be one. You could say similar um, suburban. Um, Demographic. Demographic. Well, I was going right. to say suburban. Yeah. Or you could say rural Montpelier oriented demographic. Did it say in Callis's email what they suggested we do? No. no. Support them. They don't care what we do. <laughs> I think we could just say historically linked. Yeah. I, like yeah. um, I would also say, I would also maybe say something about the ge the geography, um, because who else would we join in with? Potentially Worcester and Woodbury. Those aren't even like Middlesex isn't even linking us to Woodbury. It wouldn't be enough. Right. There's not. Yeah, there's no geographic connection there. So, yes, Sarah. So uh, the other thing is when you look at the map, yeah, uh, if you remove, if you don't go with this apportionment, it kind of screws everybody up. It, it uh, right. yeah. you know, if we go with if we go with Worcester, I don't know how that adds up population wise. But then, not you know, right, not enough. Then you've got Elmore and Woolcott together. That's certainly not going to be enough. So it's it, it it's a when you pull that string, the whole thing unravels. And also, uh, the good thing about this uh, apportionment that they've got now is that it removes uh, Worcester from Lamoille and puts it in Washington, which is nice for everybody. Um, Mary, did Tom Little say why he opposed this particular um, configuration? Because- You know, I, I'm not sure. I'm, not, I, I can't, I'm, I'm trying to recall where I heard this and I can't remember why he didn't do it. Because it may have been it may have been the single a single legislative senate seats. It, I, mean, I just don't remember. I mean, I know in Barry, they're upset because they want to have um, single Barry seats, <coughs> and in Montpelier they want to have single seats, and so there's a lot of that so, dis, uh, discomfort. <coughs> I, I would I would bet you it doesn't have anything to do with us. <laughs> you know, I, right. I would I would bet it's some other districts they got people who are who are hopping mad and, and putting pressure on them. I don't know. Who knows? Why don't Why don't we um, list um, as a benefit? New plan brings uh, Worcester back into Washington County. There's nothing wrong with putting that in. Yeah, I agree. You wait, say that again. You're suggesting that we add no no. What? No. No, just showing the benefit of this of this, this new plan. New plan brings Worcester oh. back to Washington County. Yeah, okay, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Also, um, we could comment and say Callus plan would leave leads to a domino effect of <laughs> of illogical results. Yeah. Consequences. Lead to Middlesex aligning with um, towns with which it has no relationship, or you know something like that, or the domino effect that would require redrafting, redoing district. Right. Many, right. many if other. Is, if we still have, if we still have East Montpelier, then Rosie, their town clerk, will be the district clerk and Sarah gets off the hook. Well, we can't put that down. <laughs> <laughs> no, if, it, if, 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 the, if we get, if the current system stands, then I'm the district clerk because uh, East Montpelier has lost a little bit of its community. Oh, that's right. They lost a little sliver. Yeah. Right. And so that's actually, I, I want to bring, go circle back to that piece, because if I were East Montpelier, I would be concerned about that 
So I'm not sure if we want to have on the back burner that we would be supportive of East Montpelier seizing back <laughs> Adamant, <laughs> and that would be we we would be okay with that. It's I think though there's something about it, that's going to be too many people perhaps. Um, it because is the population has grown or something. Um, but East Montpelier, that's a very small part for them to um, to lose. Um, and I just, you know, I, I think they, 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 they may question that. And um, what are, you know, do we have a sort of a backup plan of supporting that if, if possible and what that would look like? Well, we don't know what the standard deviation is. We don't know what the deviation that's allowable, right. or at least I don't as a member, maybe, maybe you do with the materials you got, or maybe, no. maybe, um, uh, our town clerk got <laughs> trouble. Well, you got them too, Mary. All the links you can link on. I sent all those links. You can go and look through all the maps, figure it out. I'll get in touch with. So, so I think that for for today's purpose, do, does anyone else have any comments, Theo? It looked like you had something you wanted well, to say. Yeah, well, just tiny bit on the uh, idea of not. I mean, I'm supportive of consistency here and and taking the lead, but the language around not working with certain groups. I mean, at the end of the day, if things were changing us, we'd work with our compatriots wherever they were in Washington County. I just see the callous thing, at least my perception of it, is it's they need to justify more what they think they're asking for that's different. Uh, and I still don't, I don't really understand why they are trying to so fundamentally reconfigure uh, so I would, if there's a motion in order, maybe it's premature, but to take the lead and say, we'd like to accept the recommendation submitted. Yeah. Yeah. I second that motion, if that's a real motion. Uh, well, it was an no. attempt. Yeah, one. I was going to say, is that a motion? Okay. I, didn't want, I didn't want to foreclose conversation, but it kind of makes sense to just well, say. I thought, I thought Sarah wanted to go through all the questions before we voted. That's no, all. that's actually, that was the, the most, uh, I just want to make sure that we didn't like vote and go because that sometimes happens. So I just wanted to get to the rationale. And Mary, to answer your question, if you click on the districts, Washington 3 as now devised, which is Callis, Woodbury, and Worcester, has a population of 3,957. Washington 4, with the little cutout, is 3,973. So it's, it's fairly close. Um, and that keeps Callis in, uh, that keeps Worcester in, uh, not associated with Lamoille, it keeps it in Washington County altogether. So just to, I mean, they're almost even, I can see why they did what they did. Well, yeah. that's exactly the point, but I mean, like what we don't know is how much is Adamant if it came back in, how much would that deviate? We're, they're both 3,900 plus <laughs> minus. And, you know, Adamant, like if it's another 200, is going to skew at 200 more in our district and 200 less. So it's a net of 400 difference. You know, see what I'm saying? That's why it'd be yeah. hard for us to say that we, we support having Adamant come back into well, East Well, I think I can do the math because when we were Middlesex and East Montpelier in the previous configuration, we were, uh, the deviation was positive 135. Mm -hmm. Without, uh, so that's that's the 2012 uh, alignment. Is that, I don't know who that was. Was that Tony Klein possibly? The 2021 uh, alignment is, is negative 314. So I suppose if you add 135 and 314, you can find out what, uh, what, what we've, what, what Adamant offered or take 135 from 314, right? Yeah, but I thought we lost, I mean, it's based on an updated census and we lost 7%. So cool. we have to add that in. Right, except I don't know whether or not those figures they gave for us are seven percent minus at without adamant. Is what yeah, I'm saying. right. Okay. I think we should just not talk about adamant because we don't really okay. without knowing more. Okay. So, any further discussion on that? Okay. So, all those in favor of the motion from Theo and the second from Sarah that we um, endorse keep the, the um, di redistricting the way that the map has stated for 2022? Well, would be, 
Wouldn't it be for a decade? Right. Yeah, I, for, for a decade, well, for the next 10 years. Well, yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. And we are ending the BCA meeting at 6.57 p.m. Aren't you supposed to say any other business to come before the board? <laughs> I don't think we have that on the agenda, do we? Uh, I just want to ask, is it uh, possible, do, do you want me to do this questionnaire, Liz, or do you want to do the questionnaire? Would you do the questionnaire? Who, just tell, the board should just say who could you, who should do the questionnaire? Or Sarah. do you want me? Sarah. Okay. I, move, I move that we ask Sarah to complete the questionnaire. Oh, okay. trust me then. All right. Okay. Well, and all those in favor say aye. Don't we use the word appoint? <laughs> I second the appointment of Sarah. Okay, we don't really have to move that though, do we? No, okay. Oh. I didn't think so, but. And I will get in touch with Kim to just have a conversation with her. So you said that Callis is, or East Montpelier is having their meeting on Tuesday, Sarah? Yes. I wonder if I no. should go. East Montpelier. Ooh. East Montpelier is, yes, you should. Oh, that, but we're having a meeting um, next Tuesday. We are? Blackboard, yes. Yeah. We're having a special. Why we, we're having a select board meeting tonight. Well, I know we're having a bit confidential <laughs> meeting. Now. <laughs> we just talked we, about that. We, 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 guys, I'm sorry. I go by my calendar, and every and Tuesday I, for the rest of your life, we have select board meetings. Yeah. <laughs> so Tuesday the ninth, we have a select board meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not on my calendar. Well, that's your problem. I know. <laughs> I'm putting it on my calendar right now. So are we adjourned? And yes. The so following adjourned. Tuesday, we have a select board meeting. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you.